Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. All right, let's talk about some tips and tricks for this T-Mobile home internet gateway, specifically the two white ones that are out there nowadays. This is the G4AR. There is almost an identical looking one that's the G4SE and they both have antenna ports on the back side of them. This one here actually put some right angle SMA adapters on because I find it a lot um, handier to have the antennas pointing backwards than pointing straight down at the ground. So I'll put links to that kind of stuff in the video description down below for you. But there are a couple things that people have been finding out about these antennas. And I want to share some of those with you. And one of them is actually courtesy of Waveform posting on their Signal Squad Facebook page. And that is um, folks that are having trouble actually getting the antenna, uh, there the external antenna connection to actually hold. And so in the settings here, on the front, uh, you just click over a couple times and then there's an option for you to select internal antenna or external antenna. And I didn't have any problems um, doing that with me at, at my house, but some folks have reported seeing an error message come up and it won't switch from the internal to the external. So thanks to uh, Waveform of talking to some of their customers and seeing some trends there and customers giving feedback, I guess, is they found the problem is the gateway needs to see 5G signal in order for it to switch to the external antenna, which makes absolutely zero sense to me because uh, oftentimes you're trying to get better signal or get 5G signal with the antenna itself. So to be frank with you, I'm very baffled what T-Mobile really thinks the antenna is for or um, you know why it is a six foot cable, all kinds of stuff about that. but. Uh, I, I won't go into that, I guess. So uh, for that, what the answer is, is you can drive in your car with this powered up, you know, either with a little inverter or, um, you know, if your car has a built-in uh, 110 outlet, that's one way uh, to power it. And then get it so that it has 5G signal, and then you can switch it over to the external port. You'll do, you do need to have your antenna with you. I think as well so that it actually picks up that signal and uh, and then it will save that so then you can power down the device bring it home and it will still be locked onto the external antenna um, at least I haven't seen uh, it automatically switch back to internal so that's the trick there and that might be something that you might need to get set up before you can start my next uh, trick and this is actually something that um, I've seen in the past with some of the other gateways I've shown you some tricks as far as getting off of N41 band and getting on N71 and there's some reasons for that sometimes your N41 is actually so congested that even though it's a better signal you can actually get worse performance the other thing is if you have kind of a weaker N41 then your uploads can sometimes be dismal like I've had my uploads be uh, fractional of a megabytes per second uh, here in my house so maybe I'm getting 0.5 um, megabits per second and I'm, I might be getting 50 60 or 70 uh, for download but the upload so horrendous that my internet really uh, appears to not work so uh, this fix for that is to switch to in 71 which you might um, get a little bit worse uh, download but I've seen much faster upload capability and N71 is a lower frequency out there in the spectrum so it, it travels much farther and it penetrates better through walls and ceilings and trees and all that kind of stuff so um, working with one of my fans or my viewers Mark um, emailing back and forth he also shared that he found out how to do that on this gateway as well and it's actually pretty much um, almost the same as what I showed in the past I think I showed it I forget if it was on the um, uh, Nokia trash can tower, if it was the Arcadian one. But basically, if you were to use the T-Mobile antenna itself, then it has three cables, and they're all labeled 1, 2, 3, 4. And then the ports down here are also labeled 1, 2, 3, 4 on the bottom of them. And the trick to get it to go to N71 is to plug in just antenna 3. Uh, onto the antenna 3 port on there so you're basically just hooking up one of the three leads and that will keep it from connecting to N41 from what I've seen and from what Mark has seen perhaps if you have a super strong N41 it could still find it 
but that is the trick and so I'm gonna show you speed test of what does that mean for me when I have a uh, single port plugged in and I'm gonna do that actually on three different or actually yeah three different antennas I'm gonna do this T-Mobile antenna I'm gonna do the waveform 4x4 antenna instead of being antenna lead 3 to 3 because of the antenna waveform um, order it um, is typically for this device uh, going from 1 to 4 on the antenna ports here on the gateway it's the waveform 1 waveform 3 waveform 2 waveform 4 so you actually reverse the middle two uh, cables so that they're not 1 2 3 4 it's actually 1 3 2 4 let's uh, hook that up and then I also have a waveform 2x2 two two, and people have often asked me hey can I do a 2x2 two two with this I don't really want to spend the money on a 4x4 four four. and my answer in the past has been very clearly kind of no and the reason for that is because a lot of times that I hook up both 2x2 two two antenna ports it actually it will work for a little while and then I think what it's doing is it's connecting to N41 and I think what it's um, doing is some of these ports are designated as upload or download based and it must be um, missing a um, an upload channel when I do that and what that's what that means is that I lose connection and then my internet doesn't work even though if I go into the um, the T-Mobile app and the settings it shows it has good signal uh, but it actually doesn't uh, because it can't uh, upload anything so it typically does not work for me. Maybe there is one of the combinations that you could get signal with the 2x2 and it would work, but I haven't seen it just yet. And then the other thing is for this specific setup where I'm using the 2x2 antenna and just using one cable, that does work. So maybe that is a case that you would actually want to go for a waveform 2x2 with this device as if you're planning on just using a single cable from it. So let's go up to the attic, let's test it out, I'm going to show you the speed difference that I get, the signal metrics difference that I get, and uh, what I think overall of it. Alright, so here we are in the third floor attic space. You can obviously see the T-Mobile antenna there with its short lead that's not connected to anything right now. And then we have the uh, G4AR that's right here. And you can see right now it is showing that I'm uh, connected to the external antenna. I have very good signal. On the back side there you can see those antenna leads go uh, out through here out through the wall and actually go um, over into the attic space with the waveform 4x4 so that's what i have it hooked up to right now and they're all four connected and we'll look at what our speeds are there and then we'll do this trick see how that does i'll also hook up back to this um, t-mobile one just to show you what the difference would be if I was just hooked up to the single band there. Now I do have, actually now I think about it, I have a waveform 2x2 two two out there. I will hook that up as well and see that'll be interesting because the waveform 2x2 two two is actually the same price for the antenna itself as the T-Mobile one is. You'll have to get uh, cabling, but you might need the cabling anyways uh, because this T-Mobile one has such a short lead on it anyway. So let's Let's do some testing here with the G4AR and trying to get it to uh, swap bands on us and try a couple different antennas. All right, so now I am directly connected to the G4AR Wi-Fi, and this is with the waveform 4x4, so you can see my uh, my band B66. It's on the external antenna. Signal to noise is 12. The number I kind of like to use as a as a guidepost is a minus 10 for RSRQ. And then for the 5G, I'm on N41, and my RSQ is also minus 10 with a you know, signal to noise there of 22 and a half. So let's run a speed test on that. All right, so there is our baseline with the waveform 4x4, and we saw we are on N41. So let me unhook um, the ports 1, 2, and 4. On the antenna so I only have port 3 hooked up all right so here is the connection you can see I have uh, my waveform port number 2 cable hooked up to number 3 on the G4AR and the other 
three are disconnected from it. So on the front side, if I look at the, um, the signal it shows, I still have very good signal. Okay, so here we are. Now this is with just the single uh, antenna port plugged in. You can see my RSRQ technically on B66 uh, got better. And um, my signal to noise there is at 10 now. All right, here on 5G, you can see that it swapped to N71 and my RSRQ is minus 11. So uh, not bad, but um, you know, not awesome either. All right, so here is a speed test with just a single connection there. So this is, um, you know, N71 for 5G and uh, still B66 for the 4G. What you can see here, my pings are a little bit slower. You know, I, before I think I was uh, 20 or under for my unloaded. The um, download did clearly take a, a dive on N71. It's about half of what I was getting with N41. But if you look there, my upload speeds actually increased um, a good portion. So before I think it was around 30 for upload on N41. This is getting me 50 for upload. And I've seen that change to be even more drastic in the past. There's been times my N41 would maybe be single digit for upload. And um, then my N71 in those cases would still be high. So I might still have like a, a 50 for on the N71 but just have like four or five upload on N41. So this does have the potential to help a lot of people uh, under certain situations. This isn't a setup I would recommend for everyone. Again, this is really for folks that are seeing an issue with N41, especially on upload of N41. This allows you to take advantage of N71 that's out there. All right, so now I just disconnected all the external antennas, but this guy will stay locked on anyways. Um, you know, it gives you a surprisingly good reading there for having no antennas hooked up to it, but that's really a false promise. But so if I go and scroll over here, um, we can get to, oh, just passed it. This is the external antenna, so you hit OK, and then I can scroll up and select internal, and that will switch it over to the internal success there, you can see it is now active. So now we can do a test and see what the uh, speeds are like with the internal antennas. All right, so here is the internal antennas. You can see it says omnidirectional down there. There's actually two antennas in there. Uh, one's a uh, directional, one's omnidirectional. But um, you can see my RSRQ is minus 10, but I'm on B2 now. And then for the uh, 5G, I'm actually a little surprised, oh, there it goes. So switch to N41. I was gonna say I was surprised this was on N71, but sometimes it takes a second to, to grab N41. And you can see my RSRQ is minus 10. If you look at my signal to noise, it's uh, 14 and a half. I think if you remember, I think I was at 22 uh, with the signal to noise on the waveform four by four. And I was also on B66. But let's go and do a speed test here. All right, so here is just the stock G4AR with internal antenna. Now you can see the ping there is bad. I would say this is a little bit of an outlier. It's normally not that high, maybe in the mid thirties. But you can see my download speed is actually very good, very much in par with where it was with the waveform 4x4 um, with worse latency, which I've seen that many times. But now here you can see my upload is uh, drastically worse than with the waveform. So that waveform is really helping me get, what's that, like four times better uh, upload capability. And I've seen that over and over again. So um, you also see some more jitter there with uh, with this setup so this is um, not terrible but certainly the waveform 4x4 uh, greatly improved it and then if you look at just the single connection there it uh, it also gave you a lot better upload speeds all right so here we are with the t-mobile antenna now and i have that one hooked up of um, cable three of the antenna to port three of the gateway so this one's a little bit different because of the way the waveform is numbered versus the way that the t-mobile one is numbered um, so again t-mobile is three to three the waveform is two from the antenna to uh, three on the gateway but we can see i'm on b2 my rsrq is actually um, good there minus eight and then on 5g we can see it went back to the n71 um, with an RSRQ of minus 11 with a signal to noise of 6.
All right, well, there we go. You know, we got about the same download for um, the T-Mobile antenna versus the um, waveform one, even with the single uh, connection. The ping was worse on this T-Mobile one. And then my, again, my upload uh, really came in touch the waveform one. So I'm sure there's lots of reasons for that. But um, um, this shows you at least the trick does work with the T-Mobile antenna of moving you over uh, from N41 to N71. But I'm not sure um, it's going to give you a huge benefit. All right, so now I have hooked up the waveform 2x2, and I hooked up the minus 45, which is the same polarization of the waveform one that I had hooked up before. And you can see I went instantly back on B66, and my RSRQ there minus 8, so that's showing really good. And then my uh, connection on 5G, just to make sure it gets updated here. I don't see a signal to noise, but that's been in 71 and my RSRQ is minus 13. So not very good there. That's worse. Uh, but let's see what kind of speed test I get. All right. So this is the waveform two by two and just hooking up the minus 45 cable to port number three on the G4AR gateway. All right, there we go. So, you know, faster download than the T-Mobile antenna, a little bit faster upload, but not that different. Ping pretty similar um, to the T-Mobile one. So this waveform one certainly does work. And in general, it is faster than the T-Mobile one. Um, but you do have to buy your cabling, which like I said, you might want to do anyways, even if you have the T-Mobile one out there. So show some promise. All right, so I always like to do a baseline again. Um, so this is the waveform four by four, just going back to it. You can see I'm on B2 now. I have RSRQ of minus nine. And then for the external I'm on N41 and 22.8 or 24. So that's very similar to where I think it was before. All right, and so here's the uh, A to B. This is back to A now of a waveform 4x4 regular hookup. One, three, two, four is the order of the waveform cables. And there we go. We can see we actually sped up a bit there on the, uh, the download from where we started at 200. It's been, you know, I forget, maybe not quite an hour since I started it. So seeing a little bit of increase in download my upload looks like it's right on par with where it was before. So maybe a little bit of uh, deprioritization going on earlier tonight. All right, so there we go. We saw the results now. The waveform 4x4 um, was the winner. It did outperform. You know, the, um, the download speeds um, were actually, I think, slightly faster with the, the stock internal ones. But as soon as I went back to um, the 4x4 waveform setup, my speeds had apparently kept getting faster throughout the night. So that kind of explains that. And the waveform always won out on the upload, often by a large margin. Now, there could be several reasons for that, but if this is consistent of what I see. Your mileage may vary somewhat, but I have been very happy with uh, the waveform products, especially the 4x4 antenna. This one, I cannot say the same thing. If you want something that just gets you on N71, especially if you can convince T-Mobile to give it to you for free, then um, yes, it's probably worth it to go for this and, um, and and get it. But as you saw in the testing, the speeds, even when it was locked to N71, were way slower for the upload, whereas the waveform one was um, much faster. Uh, you know, what, what I get, like 50 um, megabits per second upload for the waveform one. So um, from that standpoint, if you care about the speed and the performance, you really got to spend the money and um, go for the waveform. Get the better antenna cables. If you do get any cables, don't get ones uh, this thick if you're going to run any distance on them because you're going to have so much loss in the cable that the antenna actually is not going to be any type of um, reception gain for you. So those are my findings. If you have questions, put them down in the comments below. Also, if you have any of your own tips or tricks or findings that you have, please uh, put them in the comments or send me an, a note and uh, I'll make sure to test it out myself and see if I can confirm it and then uh, it might be an upcoming video. So thank you and take care.